I had a retail shop and I met somebody who was buying a guitar for the first time, I'd say, do you want to buy a guitar or do you want to learn about guitar? Because if you have a few minutes, I would like to educate you about the guitar so that you can then make an informed decision. Most of my customers would say, oh, yeah, please. And I would start them with what you're calling a boutique guitar. Because that's where it starts. It starts with, in an ideal world, if money were no object, we would all go to a master guitar maker. <laughs> and they would meet us, we'd meet them, and they'd say, oh, so this is what I'm looking for. And they'd say, okay, I think you should have a little bit of this. And they'd get to know your size and who you are. And you talk about tone woods and pickup choices and what kind of music you play or what kind of music you want to play because it's your first guitar, you know, and they would build a guitar just for you. And that would cost you probably somewhere between five and ten thousand dollars. Well, money is an object, <laughs> and so most people can't afford that. And so the way you get to a more affordable guitar is the first thing you do is you get rid of the luthier. The luthier is the really expensive part, not the wood. And so you pay a luthier to design a guitar, but then you get some people with some less developed skills who can reproduce what the luthier designed. And that might get you down into that $2,500 level or $2,000 level. But to get less than that, the labor in a Western country is too much. So the next step is usually to remove the labor. And you have to take it to a country where the labor costs are much, much lower. And frankly, they're much lower because... <laughs> we say they're not as developed or whatever that means. The point is they're working in a factory probably under conditions and for a rate which our governments say we're not allowed to pay people. We're not allowed to treat people in that manner, frankly. <laughs> um, and I don't want to get into a big political discussion on the matter, but the point is to get to guitar prices as low as what people think guitar prices should be, um, they're not willing to live that way. <laughs> and we have to do it far enough away where we don't have to look at it. Really, for the most part. Um, and that gets us down into lower and lower price points. And then, that, then from there, once we get that labor cost down, really, we have to start making choices about the components and saying, this pickup costs a little bit too much money. We can make a pickup this way, which will save us a little bit of money. You know, we don't have to use real... Sitka spruce, you know, for an acoustic guitar top, we're going to use this spruce-like object, you know? <laughs> something that looks something like spruce, whatever it happens to be, right? Or use laminate woods instead of solid woods, it's a little easier to work with and such. And we start to compromise the quality of the instrument from that point on. But really it starts initially with a one person who could make you the ideal instrument, perhaps, based on your needs. Then it goes to a factory model. Uh, and then we go to a cheaper factory model. And then we start to remove the, start to change the quality of the components until we get to lower and lower price points. And you can buy a guitar, a retailer or a distributor can buy a guitar out of factories in the world where they're literally cost about 15 or $20 freight of board, <laughs> wherever that port happens to be. Lots of shipping and all that stuff. Um, and what I found when I explained that to customers, I'll just walk them through one particular guitar line. This price is usually changed by about $200 or so each time. Or, um, I had many customers who would actually stop me. They'd say, I'd go maybe two points past where, where they thought was a good level for them. They'd say, oh, okay, okay, let's come back to this $800 guitar or whatever. Because the second point of that is almost any guitar made today really is fine for someone to start making music on. If you're inspired and want to play, you can make it to make music on pretty much any guitar out there at this point in time, you can start with. But your skills will reveal the limitations of the instrument. And the worst guitars out there might reveal it in the first few weeks, you know? <laughs> but then you know, a decent guitar that you spent, I don't know, let's say 200 bucks on or something of the sort, you might not reveal the limitations for a year you might quit before you get to that point. That might be the fine guitar. As a parent, they're trying to think about those things, right? If it's a parent buying a guitar, then, well, they don't stick with anything. So I just kind of want to get in, get out, you know? <laughs> if they buy a guitar for maybe $500, that might last them two or, or three years, you know? And if they get a guitar in that $800,000 price point or Euro price point, whatever currency we're talking about here, um, there's a good chance that's the last guitar that a parent is going to have to buy 
for them. By the time they outgrow that guitar, well, they can get their own part-time job and buy their own guitar, you know? And, and the parents appreciate hearing that. And the adults who were buying a guitar like that said, well, what guitar do you think I can just sort of keep for the rest of my life? And I said, well, you might keep this, the first one or the second one. So this one up here is, there's no reason to get rid of it short of, you've just changed your, <laughs> your, your, your taste for the day. You know, but it'll always be a guitar that will, will perform well for you for the rest of your life. And so some people will get their first guitar as a nicer guitar than some people will have for the first 20 years of guitar playing. <laughs>